Hey guys, it's Casey. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. It's finally here. Um, I am going to do the DIY dashboard video that I have promised you guys probably for the last couple months. I don't even know. It's been so long. So let's get started. Let me show you. Um, this will be our finished product. So if you can even see this, this is a clear dashboard divider with the top tab. So we're only going to do top tabs today. Um, but there will be four tabs on top and you can use these to divide each one of the sections in your planner. So um, a lot of you have seen mine and you've asked me how I've done it and I told you that I would show you a video. So you're going to need a happy planner punch because I do not um, actually have the cut files for the punches. So you'll need your happy planner punch. You'll need five mil laminating sheets. You can use the three mil, but they're just a lot thinner. These um, five mil I find are, are a lot nicer, the thicker material. I will have a link down in the description box for these on Amazon. And then I have my laminator here. This is just your classic homeschool mom laminator. I do have a new one coming that will actually laminate the 10 mil sheets but um, that one hasn't quite got here yet. So this is just Scotch brand. I think I picked this up at Walmart. Um, I think it was less than 20 bucks. I'll try to link it on Amazon as well if you don't have one. Mine's kind of falling apart. I've got a piece of tape here to, to hold it up. So anyways, um, make sure that the laminator you have will laminate five mil sheets and you'll want to click the button so that it heats up to the right temperature for five mil. Um, so let's get started. Actually, let's bring this back out. The first thing you're going to do is if you only want four dividers, you're going to need four sheets of the um, lamination pouches. Of course, we're going to count this as my first one. So we're just going to put these in our laminator. And if you can see, there is a sealed bottom and then the top and the sides are open. So what you want to do is load it sealed side down first or seal side in first and just load that in there and I'm going to fast forward through this part so that you you don't have to watch the whole lamination process but you're going to go ahead and load all four or however many you can do eight or twelve or however many you need to do but go ahead and laminate all of them with nothing in them and um, then the next thing we'll do is I'll come back and show you how to do this in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so now we're in our Cricut Design Space. Now there's a couple different ways that we can make these dividers. Um, you can use your shapes tools and actually make the shapes, the sizes of the dividers that you want to make. But I have tried to make things a little bit easier for you guys. So on my website, under the, in the store, under PNG files, there is actually a zip file with all four of the dashboard dividers that you can download um, and they are $1.79. So when you actually download these, um, I actually have them saved in my desktop in a folder called DIY Tutorials, but they're going to come like this as a zipped folder. So you'll want to click on the zipped folder wherever you've saved it at and compress folder tools and then you're going to extract all. And you want to make sure that the place you extract them to is the actual place where you're going to remember to find them because that's going to be important when you go into your Cricut design space. So I've actually already started a new folder and extracted them all into that. So let's just go to our Cricut design space and I have actually un already uploaded three of the dividers so I just need to go grab the fourth one. So we're going to go to upload image, we're going to browse and this is where it's important to remember where you put those files. So we're going to do dashboard four, open, and since this is just going to be a cut file, we're going to go simple, continue, and then we just want to check here and make sure that none of this is wonky. Everything looks good, so we're going to continue and name it whatever you want to name it here. It's going to automatically come up to whatever the file name was that it was saved as, and you're going to click on save as cut image. Then click save. 
Now I actually forgot to do these other as other three as cut images, so they're going to be a little bit more tricky whenever I go to um, actually do my project here in Cricut Design Space. So when you first insert them in, you've got all these error messages telling you that these are too large for projects. That is mainly because, well, number one, because they're too large, and number two, this one, see it says fill, no fill, because that is actually a cut image already. So I'm gonna cut that one off for right now. Now these, this looks like this is a cut file because it says no, um, no fill. So I'm gonna turn that one off so I can't see it. And then see dash three and dash two are cut and print files. So I need to change that. That was where I messed up and didn't click on um, cut image. So we're gonna change that to no fill and we're going to hide that one and then we're going to work on this one and do the same thing change print to no fill and then i'm going to bring them all back up and what i want to do is i'm going to minimize my actual workspace here for just a second i want to click and highlight all four of them and i'm going to change well let's see yeah i'm going to change all four of them to be seven inches actually that's just messed that up so these two are seven inches, and then we're gonna make sure these are seven inches. These are not seven inches, these are 4.97. So don't do what I said do. Just change each one of their sizes to seven inches. How about that? Let's do that individually. This is supposed to be easier than what I'm making it to look. So anyways, change all four of them to seven inches. It's probably because I didn't have them lined up that they didn't all adjust. So let's just do it individually. All right, so now make sure when you're resizing the width to make sure that your little lock here, your proportion lock stays locked. Because if you go and change this to seven and these are unlocked, um, it may make the shape weird and it's not gonna turn out very good for you. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line all four of these up just on top of each other. I just wanna check how, my, how they're lining up. So I'm gonna align them all at the bottom. You don't have to do this. This is just me checking on things. And then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And all I wanna do is make sure that they're all across the top, they're all the same height and um, everything looks good. So now it's time to make it. So we're gonna click on make it. And it's gonna come up on four separate um, mats here, which is fine. And you're going to, you can change your material size to eight and a half by 11, which is fine. It'll show you where to put your sheet. And now we're just going to go forward, um, find your Cricut device, and then here is where you are going to, you're going to change your material. You want your machine set on custom. I'll show you that in just a second. But the only thing that I found for my machine, all machines I think are going to be different, but on my machine, you're going to click on custom natural wood veneer this is actually going to cut it four times um, I'm not using a deep point blade it would be different if I was I could use some other cut setting probably but I didn't want to use the deep cut blade because I'm not sure that everybody on here has one so we're going to change it to natural wood veneer and we're going to leave it at the default pressure all right and now I'm going to bring my Cricut over and show you how the process goes over there Okay, so we're going to take the actual sheets that we've already laminated and we're going to put those on our Cricut mats. Now my Cricut is already flashing and ready for me to go. So let's open that up. And this is where I was talking about putting your dial on custom so that you can select that um, veneer finish. And then we're just going to click our load button and our cut. And like I said, it's going to cut four times, so I'm going to fast forward through this part. Okay, and now we're finished, so we're going to unload. And we're going to need to pull off the excess. And then my best advice pulling these off would be to flip your mat upside down and actually pull the mat off versus pulling the plastic off. That way you don't bend the plastic. So we have our first divider. 
Now, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Your Cricut's gonna keep going. So you would just put your next sheet on your mat and cut. I'm not actually gonna show that process. What I do wanna show you though is the hole punch part. So let's grab our, and I have found that my pink Happy Planner Punch works much better than my blue one. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes I have to struggle with this. Now on the, the first tab here, let me show you what I had to do for my divider with the first tab. You wanna be careful because if you use the lines that the Happy Planner has for their classic size sheets, if you load your sheet in there and line that up, this whole punch is gonna go through your tab. So don't do that. You want to line it up with your first punch and then you want your plastic to come, if you can see that, almost down to the edge of this next punch here. And then you will punch it. Of course, I've already done this one, but be careful not to punch your top tab. Now, your, your second, third, and fourth ones, you can line up with the lines for the Classic Happy Planner um, here. And then I like to grab my punch. I don't like to punch it down on the table. Grab it, and you should hear it click thoroughly through all of them. Some people have trouble with some of their punches not making it through. And if that's the case, then I want you to just keep putting lots of pressure on the whole thing until you hear each one pop through. But mine have all popped through. So you'll just continue this process um, for all of your dashboards and you will have a set of four. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep making all four of them and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay, so now I have all four of my dividers and these two are being a pain. So we have all four of them and you will just pop them into your planner. They don't fit my discs very well because I'm not using Happy Planner discs, but you can see, and this is why I like using the Levenger punch because the Happy Planner doesn't fit, the punch doesn't fit the other punches. So you have all four of your dividers or however many you make. And um, just to let you know, I do have a new laminator coming and um, I will be making thicker, nicer, thicker, clear dividers out of a thicker laminating material. And then I also have some new material coming. Let me show you, not this one. It is, I gotta grab it. I got a whole stack of stuff and I don't laugh at how this turned out because I was practicing cutting. But this um, semi-transparent um, material here is nice, nice and thick and sturdy and I will be making dividers and selling them on my website. So I'll have this frosted look and then I'll also have a clear one available for you um, as soon as I can get them, get my products in and get them made. So anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope you would consider. If you do subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell on the side there. Change your notifications to all so that you get all notifications every time I upload. And um, I don't even know if I said it, but give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see you with my plan with me video and my classic dashboard tomorrow. Bye guys.